Now let's talk about a module called Honeypot. Honeypot isn't generally thought of as a security module per se, but it is a good extra safeguard. Honeypot is a module that helps you catch form spam. So we can see here, it uses both the honeypot and timestamp methods, we'll talk about those in a minute, of deterring spam bots from completing forms on your Drupal site. Specifically, for our purposes in this tutorial, it can help catch spam against account registration as a type of form spam. This is important because if you happen to have slipped up on your permission settings somewhere, there are spam bots out there that search specifically for Drupal sites with open registration so they can autonomously register an account and start trying to do malicious things. These bots run nonstop and will find your site. It's just a matter of whether you've protected yourself adequately against them. So go ahead and take a second, download Honeypot for Drupal 8 and install it on your site and then come back when you're ready. Once you have Honeypot on your site, just to make sure, go to Extend and scroll down to Spam Control. Honeypot should be checked. If it's not, check it and click Install. And when that's done, go to Configuration. And then beneath Content Authoring, we'll now see Honeypot Configuration. Go to that. This is all pretty straightforward here. There's not a whole lot to do, but it does a whole lot to help your site. So. First we have the option to protect all forms with Honeypot. Usually it's best to leave this unchecked and to choose specifically on an individual basis which forms you want protected by Honeypot. You can also choose to log blocked form submissions. I've never been in a situation where that would be particularly helpful, so I leave this unchecked typically as well. And the first thing we get to that we might want to play around with is the Honeypot element name. This is where we start getting into some of the cool stuff that Honeypot does to guard your site against form spam. The honeypot element name is the name of an invisible field that it will put in your HTML that bots will see if they're reading the HTML of your site, but human readers won't see because it'll be visually invisible. So if someone fills out this invisible field, we know that that's a bot because humans can't actually see it. This is simply asking us what we want that field to be called. You want it something generic and expected like URL or sometimes I do site or a lot of times I'll do phone. Let's go ahead and put phone here just to demonstrate that we can change it. The two things you want to keep in mind are most importantly, don't duplicate any field title that you already have as a legitimate field on your user registration form or on any form that you want protected by Honeypot because that's going to cause some problems if you have two fields called the same thing and one of them is the honeypot field. Also, don't call it anything like spam catcher or something obvious like that. There's a small chance a spam bot might be in some way programmed to notice that and leave it blank. Do it as something that would make sense on your site, but that you just don't happen to have on your form. So we'll go with phone. The honeypot time limit is the other method it uses. This is the timestamp method referred to in Honeypot's information on drupal.org. This is the threshold of how fast someone can fill in the form on your site and not be considered a robot. So if we set this to one second, if someone goes to register or fill out any form on your site that Honeypot is enabled for, and they take one second or less to do so, we're going to say, okay, that was too fast to be a human. We're going to consider that to have been a bot. By default, it's set for five seconds. So if someone takes more than five seconds, we're gonna say, okay, that's probably not a bot. A bot probably wouldn't wait around for five seconds. And if it's faster than five seconds, we're saying, okay, a human probably wouldn't be able to fill out the form that fast. So we're gonna say that this is a bot. So obviously the trick here is to find some sort of medium. You don't want to make it so large that a human is going to often fill in all of the fields and submit the form in less than that time. But you want to also take into consideration the fact that the smarter bots may be programmed to fill in some information and if they happen to skip the field that you don't need them to fill out, maybe they're also programmed to wait a couple seconds to try to subvert things like Honeypot. So this partly depends on how many fields you have on the forms you're trying to protect. 
I usually go with something like three or four seconds. Let's go with three. We're going to say on our site, maybe we don't have very many fields. It's just the default user account registration fields. And it's plausible that maybe someone can fill all that out in four seconds if they're going really fast. So let's go with three. And then down here, you simply choose which forms you want protected by Honeypot. For us, we only want the user registration form protected. Then all we do is save configuration and we're done. There's not really a good way to demonstrate this because we're not a bot. We're not going to be filling in this information or filling in it super fast in under three seconds. And furthermore, we're not going to get a message to us saying that the, that the form was blocked, that we don't want to let the bots know that they were unsuccessful because then they might just try again. But with all of these settings, all you have to do is have a value here and a value here, make sure it's something that makes sense, and then choose the forms that you want enabled, and you're all set with Honeypot.